Today, I'm going to take you through how to set up continuous integration for service fabric applications and services using Visual Studio Team Services. I'll also look at Azure Resource Manager for automating those deployments of the cluster. So to get started, you need a Visual Studio Team Services account. If you don't have one, head over to visualstudio.com to create one. Once you've got your account, you need to create a new team project. I'm going to create a new one here called Service Fabric Demo. Once you've created the team project, navigate to the project homepage. There's currently no code in our team project repository. So we're going to head over to Visual Studio and create some. Let's open Visual Studio in administrator mode. This is required by Service Fabric on Windows. Once open, let's create a new Service Fabric application project. Service Fabric requires you to have a default service, so we're just going to add a stateful one here. Once created, you'll have the boilerplate code. We're going to be using Git, so we're going to go grab a Git ignore so that we don't push any unwanted files up to our repository. Here we're just using the Visual Studio .git ignore file, which is avail publicly available on the web. Either copy the file down or create a new file and copy and paste the contents in and save it as .git ignore within the, rep within the repository root. We can now initialize the Git repository locally. As you can see, not all files have been added to the Git repo. We'll add the ones that we need and make our first. Now we're going to copy the repository URL and set it as a remote origin on our Git repo. Now we can push our code up to our remote origin. Now our code is available remotely. Next, head over to jackdan slash service dash fabric. This is a repository full of scripts to help you work with Service Fabric. Clone it to your local machine. Once it's cloned, change the directory to the scripts folder. Now you'll have to install a PowerShell module. Use import-module and then the name of the script. This will make new commandlets within PowerShell available to you. What this command does is it will create a self-signed certificate, create a new resource group, create a key vault within Azure, and then upload your key or your certificate to the key vault. If you don't have a certificate, you have to use the argument create self-signed certificate, pass in a DNS name, which is basically for your certificate authority. Here, I'm just using a generic one. And then finally, you'll need to pass in the output pass for the certificate on your local machine. Remember to be careful when using self-signed certificates. You shouldn't be using them in production. Only use them for your dev clusters. Next, we're going to head over to the Azure Quick Start Templates GitHub page, where we make available our JSON documents for Azure Resource Manager. These help you provision resources in Azure using one-click deploy or repeatable JSON templates. I'm using a simple five-node, one-node type cluster. This is a secure cluster, and it also has Windows Azure Diagnostics enabled. By clicking on Deploy to Azure, it's going to open the Azure portal. This is where you can edit parameters for that particular template. You can even dig into the template within the portal and customize it. As you can see here, I've got a set of parameters to change. I'm going to 
give it a name, some admin details, and then I need to copy the key vault details that we created earlier. Be sure to double check in the portal that they have copied correctly. Sometimes PowerShell has a weird wrapping on the text. Once everything's complete, you can scroll down and press OK. Select the subscription you want and either create a new resource group or use an existing one. Read the legal terms and create. Whilst Azure is provisioning the Service Fabric cluster, we're just going to make sure that we've got the correct certificates installed on our local box. This is the same certificate that you created earlier and it loaded to Key Vault. You might notice at this point that in the Azure portal, Service Fabric doesn't have any nodes. This is just because Service Fabric is still provisioning behind the scenes. Next, let's set up our publishing profile. Go to Visual Studio and right click on the project. Go down to Publish, and that should open the following dialog. Select the appropriate Microsoft account you wish to use. In the drop down, you should then see the cluster we have just provisioned or are currently provisioning. Hopefully, you get a green tick next to it. If not, make sure the certificate is installed on the local machine. Notice the upgrade the application tick box at the bottom. Check this if you want to upgrade an existing application rather than overwrite it. There is also a configure upgrade settings section which gives you more fine grained controls. Make sure you click save profile in the top right and then cancel. If you go to Solution Explorer, and look inside the Publish Profiles folder, you should be able to see Cloud.xml and Local.xml. Cloud.xml will be populated with the fields that you've just entered in the previous dialog. Now that we've edited the Cloud.xml, we're going to have to push that change back up to the Git repository. Create a new commit with the Cloud.xml change in it, and push it to the remote repository. Now let's head over to the Visual Studio Team Services and set up our build pipeline. Go to the Build tab and press the green plus sign. Notice the Azure Service Fabric application build definition predefined for you. Select that and press Next. Leave the defaults if they look correct and press Create. Notice that you've now got six build tasks pre-populated from restoring NuGet packages, building solutions, all the way through to dropping the artifacts on a build server. We're going to save that and rename it. Let's queue a build. All goes to plan, we should have a successful build. Now let's head over to the release tab. Select new definition and notice the Azure Surface Fabric deployment option. Select that. Tick continuous deployment if that's what you're after. Change it to the hosted build agent and press create. Once the release dashboard is loaded, click on the manage button on the right side. New service endpoint. Now you need to select Certificate-Based Connection. 
go to Visual Studio, go to your cloud.xml and copy out the connection endpoint. Paste that into the cluster endpoint and give your connection a name. Next, we need the client certificate. As you look under the eye, it will tell you how to get there. Is the base64 string. I'm just going to copy that and paste that in. Give it the password for the certificate and press OK. The connection to the cluster should now be established. We can now use the drop down. Select the triggers tab. Select the drop down and select the build that we've just created. Save. And now click release. Create release. Put in the build artifact. And create. If you now click on releases, you should see that release has been provisioned. Double click. And you can go and look at the logs. We now go to the resource groups and find the cluster. See the release has been successful. We can click on the Explorer from the Azure portal. This will give us a security warning. If you're happy to do so, press continue and then find the self-signed certificate, which should have DNS as you provided. And that should let you there. That warning is due to the certificate being self-signed, not by a governed uh, certificate authority. As you can see now, this is the Service Fabric Explorer on our remote host. If we were to go down and make a change, Save that. Do a git push. And go back to our Visual Studio Team Services. We should now see a build being queued. And we do. As long as this build is successful, it should trigger a release. We have a new release. So if we go into the Service Fabric Explorer, we should be able to see an update in progress. There's not currently one. So if we look at the logs, we can see that it's waiting for the upgrade on the cluster go back to the Service Explorer and now we can see that the update has begun. Service Fabric updates across update domains. As you can see here, there's five, zero through four. This means that your machines or your nodes are spread across those update domains so that not everyone fails and service is available at all times. You can dig into the update details here. And we can go and look at the cluster map. This shows the update domains and the fault domains. See, each node is in its individual update domain. The update can roll back if it fails in any of the update domains. Notice the current version and the target version. If we go and look in Visual Studio Team Services at the build artifacts, you'll notice that the version reflects the build version. And once all of the update domains have completed, we have successfully updated by continuous integration and continuous deployment.